Hi, Captain Steve for BoatTest.com, and today I'm on the Helmsman Trawler 43E. Now, this is a coastal cruiser designed for an owner-operator. Let's put it through a full sea trial and performance evaluation, and we'll start looking at the operational features right here at the helm. For starters, this boat just came off the ship, so it hasn't been completely outfitted yet with the electronics, obviously, but this gives you a good idea that you can design your own panel and put it any way you want. We've got two carbon fiber panels, one high, one low. Most people would put, say, a 16, 17 inch display right in the center, a multifunction display, high and low over to the side, maybe a Vesper Cortex over to the side of the panel. Nice wood, I mean, beautiful teak work here. It's just excellent. Down below would be an engine display, perhaps, in the center. The bow and stern thrusters over to the left-hand side, then horn, emergency stop, and engine room lights. And we've got the windlass control. Over on this side, we've got the digital throttle and shift and the ignition, plus the one button start-stop. Both of these panels are easily serviceable. Have to say, I really like this beautiful steering wheel. I think this should be under glass. It's vertically mounted. There's a footrest just underneath. Now the helm seat adjusts fore and aft, it swivels, has a flip bolster as well. Now there's a couple of other features that I like about this pilot house. First of all, the windows are all raked forward so we don't get the glare effect. Each one of them has its individual windshield wiper. The center one we can open and close with a switch right above the helm. We can dog this window down to maintain its watertight integrity. And then we've got opening side doors to both port and starboard so we can add even more ventilation plus have easy access for handling lines. Really critical feature with an owner operator, especially when you've got a spring line position right here. Another thing I like on these doors is so often when you bring the door closed with the wrong hand, you'll get it slammed up against the wood, but this one has an extended handle. Simple, elegant solution. Now if we want to put instrumentation or VHF, anything like that in this upper panel, easy enough to do with drop down panels. The overhead is six feet, seven inches off the deck. There's a grab handle located right alongside the helm. I wanna see another one right here. We could always use this one at the door, but this one would be a little sturdier. Additionally, beverage holders would be nice. I really have to say, I appreciate the natural flow of ventilation throughout this pilot house. In addition to the forward opening window, the two side doors, we also have a hatch above that we can open, plus two side windows. The helm seat can also swivel to join the crowd at the L-shaped settee with the table on a high-low pedestal. This is on an elevated platform 12 inches off the deck. There's storage to both ends and underneath the platform. Notice that there's a headrest that's been added to the equation. No one else would do that. It's a very nice feature, thoughtful touch. And then just forward, along with a whole working surface, there's chart book storage underneath. There's another workstation behind the helm seat. That includes a storage drawer, generator controls, and ship's electrical panel and main battery switches. Now, as we make our way up to the bow, we have 10 inch cleats. I can easily see that a lot of work went into these rails. I mean, they're sturdy, welds are all polished perfectly, 32 inches high, anchors 20 kilograms, stainless steel polished. On top of an anchor roller, there's a swivel included. All chain road, handled by a Lumar windlass. It's a Samson post just behind, and foot controls are to the left. Now, underneath the hatch, big road locker here. We've got storage right now for the three fenders and all of our lines, and it's draining, held open by a gas assist strut. Just behind, I can see wide open deck space with non-skid molded in. Nicely kept this way, it's not cluttered. We're not putting all kinds of gear up here we don't need. It's a nice elegant solution and it makes it easy to clean this whole area. Again, ideal for an owner operator. As we make our way aft, two 30 amp shore power connections, pause hole with the horns to the side, making it double as a cleat, waste pump out right there, and there's a gate leading right into the pilot house. Let's check out the flying bridge. The flybridge helm, starboard side mounted, in this case, we've got wide open space for a display. All of our gauges are over on the left-hand side along with our thruster controls and switching. Throttle is over to the right-hand side and the steering wheel is vertically mounted. Helm seat, nice comfortable pedestal seat, weatherproof. Now behind, we've got a wide open boat deck that can be populated with chairs as well. 
A crane has yet to be installed. We've got an antenna arch and notice how it's collapsible so we can bring that down and lower our bridge clearance. In the lazarette area, I've got two water tanks, stainless steel, 87 gallons each. Over to the port hand side is the hot water heater, plenty of open space. Behind, I've got the steering gear, easily accessible, which is convenient because there's an emergency steering tiller mounted over to the starboard side. The hatch, nice to see that finished on the underside, gasketed all the way around, held open by a gas support strut, channeling all the way around to bring water down and overboard. Now the engine room is accessed from a hatch right in the raised pilot house. Now the first thing that occurs to me when we've got the engine right here and access right above it is, is this going to be a loud pilot house, but I really don't think it's going to be, and here's why. There are so many layers that make up this decking. First of all, there's the perforated metal that's supporting everything. Above that is two inches of noise reduction foam. On top of that is half inch marine grade plywood, rubber, then another half inch of marine grade plywood, and then on top of that, the teak and holly sole. All of that adds a lot of weight. I mean, I can feel it all in this hatch, so I'm glad that there's two support struts helping us open up this hatch. Not only that, the construction really makes for a strong deck. As I'm walking around, there's no creaking, no groaning, nothing. This is a structural deck. Now, let's take a look inside. Happy to see that there's a convenient teak grab handle right above the ladder. Well, it's a very well laid out engine room, neat and orderly, no complicated systems. Let's take a look. Of course, the focal point being the Cummins QSB 6.7 380 horsepower engine mounted right in the center of the boat. There's easy access all around to get to the checkpoints, so that's a non-issue. To the starboard side, your battery chargers, two Raycor filters with a crossover in between and a suction gauge right in the middle, engine start battery right alongside. We can look behind the engine and we can see the house batteries. Further behind, there's a washer dryer and a 6KW generator, but we have another access point to those we'll show you in a moment. Just over to the starboard side, two isolation transformers. Right behind that bulkhead are the battery chargers and inverters. Now, other than that, I noticed that all of the floorboards are easily removable with no tools, so we can get underneath. And these deck plates are standard on this boat. Normally, we're walking on stringers, things like that. This is a much cleaner installation. Just ahead of the engine is the sea strainer for the main engine, and notice it's accessible through a hole in the deck plate. Just in front of that is another hole cut in so that we can easily reach the through hull fitting. Now the generator and washer dryer that I pointed out earlier, that's accessible from a hatch in the salon right here. Also notice as we're looking down, there's a clear panel so we can see right to the dripless shaft seal. Nice touch. The washer just behind, that can also be swapped out for a Seakeeper gyro, which would also be accessible from this hatch. I like this style of AGM batteries being used. They're convenient, they take up a lot less space, they're easy to replace in this rack. Everything about them just works. Underneath the master berth, we have the bow thruster and the battery for the thruster right alongside. Now here's the thoughtful feature. As I start the engine, I don't have to go all the way back to make sure that there's cooling water coming out the exhaust. Right alongside the pilot house here, a little telltale that's tapped into the exhaust, so I can just look over the side and see that we're getting cooling water running through the engine. Now let's get underway, and with these really tight quarters here, should give us a good indication of how easy this boat is to handle from an owner-operator's perspective. The thrusters have a lot of authority, so it's really easy to maneuver this boat in tight quarters. There's a 24 inch prop and obviously a good size rudder because I've got so much authority when turning this boat. She turns almost on her own length. Now let's look at the numbers. The Helmsman 43E Pilot House has a length overall of 45 feet, a beam of 14 feet 2 inches, and a draft of 4 feet 6 inches. With an empty weight of 35,000 pounds, 25% fuel and 3 people on board, we had an estimated test weight of 36,355 pounds. We had the single 380 horsepower Cummins QSB 6.7 liter engine turning a 24 by 26 propeller and run up to 3,000 RPM. Our speed topped out at 11.3 knots. Now, this is not a boat that one would run at full speed though. Most will run her between 7.3 and 8.2 knots, where her fuel burn ran from 2.7 to 4.3 gallons per hour and range would run from 1201.2 nautical miles to 857. 
If I thought bringing this boat away from the dock was easy, bringing it back in is even easier. She's a heavy boat, so once you get her moving, she just keeps on drifting along on her own momentum. And then it's just a matter of controlling the direction of that momentum. So when we were coming into the dock here, backed it in, I just put it in reverse, get the motion going, and then little shots with the thruster to just steer it into place. I've got excellent visibility from the stern, and then if I just stick my head out the window, I can see the whole side of the boat easily enough and it just drifts right on into the dock. Now when you put it into reverse, she has a natural tendency to back to starboard. So tying up starboard side too, I was able to use that. You put it in reverse, it brings the stern into the dock along with the thrusters. Make sure you've got the wheel centered, or at least I do, so that when I want to stop that momentum, just a shot of forward stops the momentum but doesn't move the boat, you know what I mean? If I have the rudder around and I put it in forward, then I'm gonna bring the stern one way or another and I don't want that to happen. I only wanted the stern to come over when I put it in reverse. Really easy boat to handle. This is a great owner operator's boat. So we've got wonderful performance numbers for a coastal cruiser, excellent capabilities as an owner operator's boat with simplistic operations, nothing too complicated, but behind the scenes, there are also a lot of thoughtful features going on in this boat, like the twin 30 amp electrical units, we can run everything on one or the other, or if we start increasing our load with extra air conditioning units, things along those lines, we can split the lines. It makes it able to be adapted for different locations like the Pacific Northwest, South Florida, the Caribbean, things along those lines. There are isolation transformers coming in as standard, and that's required in a lot of marinas now. We can also put two 225 watt solar panels up on the overhead so there's a lot of versatility going on and a lot of customizability that also carries over into the features but that's another video be sure to look for it for now this is my full sea trial and performance evaluation of the helmsman trawler 43e for boatest.com i'm captain steve we'll see you on the water